Sometimes what keeps us away from our sketchbooks is just coming up with things to paint. So today I'm going to share with you some ideas that will hopefully not be only fun for you to make, but will also spark your own creativity and get your juices flowing so you can make even more stuff. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Paula and I wanted to say today's video is greatly inspired by your comments and questions on my last sketchbook video. Most of those questions were about the materials I use, but because a lot of us, like me, just want to get started and paint, I'm going to put that at the end of the video and have a little show and tell of everything I use. Let's get started. Okay, here we go. And let me apologize again for the audio on that intro. I didn't notice my microphone was off. I keep making these newbie mistakes, but I'll get better, I promise. The first project we're going to do today is negative painting because there were a lot of questions about that from my previous video. And since that was my first time doing it, I was excited to do it again. The first step is you have to cover everything with a light color wash. I think in this one I went a little too light, but you know, you get the idea. Then when it's dry, you draw whatever you wanna. I wanted to draw leaves. When you're done drawing your designs, you have to take a darker shade of paint and go around everything you drew. Once it's dry, I erased all of the pencil lines, which now that I think about it, you don't necessarily need to do on the first layer if your pencil is light enough, but I like doing it. Then you draw more leaves, and the idea is that they have to go behind the first shapes you drew. But because I know I'm going to erase them and it's easier to draw it this way, I draw on top. That way I know my shapes look right in proportion and they actually look like they're behind. The pencil drawing doesn't matter as much because the trick is to pay attention when you add the next layer of paint. Here you're going to be able to see that I'm carefully painting around both sets of leaves, the first and second layer. Again, when dried, I erase my lines and drew a third layer of leaves. Once those are drawn, I'm carefully painting around the three layers of elements. Here in this close-up you can see I have all the three layers and I'm just painting the spaces around them. I'm not covering any of the leaves with my paint. Again, when that layer was dry, I erased everything and because that was my last layer of drawing, to give the painting more depth, I just grabbed a little bit of the darker green and again went over some areas. I love how it looks, so I removed the tape and there it is, gorgeous and easy. And because it is my belief that some of these simple ideas would translate amazingly into wall art or large scale paintings, here is a mock-up of how this negative painting would look in a space, and I think it's beautiful. Okay, second idea for today. This was not planned, and you're gonna see that not planned is the theme throughout this video. <laughs> I don't know how I stained this opposite page, but I'm going to use it and use all of that green that I had left over from my previous page. And because I have green paint, I thought about painting leaves again. How original. <laughs> I did add more fall colors to fill this page with leaves, and at first I thought I would outline the leaves very organically, but I very quickly hated that. So I tried to rescue it by adding dots and having straight lines all over. Then I just add all types of geometric elements to my leaves and I outline some completely out of the paint, just experimenting and having fun. This leaf, the most geometric one, is my favorite and I think the overall result is really fun. Okay, now we can move to the next idea which I had actually planned for this video. Che, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, was telling me in the comments that she is not able to use her beloved oil paints and easel at this time and that she has a lot of paint markers, so I thought I would make this idea for her. So of course, I'm using my paint markers and I chose this beautiful color combo. The idea is all about the repetition of elements. The element I chose is a little house, so I painted a bunch of colorful little houses all over my page. This was a very relaxed and fun process because it doesn't really matter if they're perfect or not. Once the acrylic paint from the markers was completely dried, it was time to outline. Now there's always many different ways in which to outline with black lines. For this page, my goal was to make it look very elevated and a little bit like block printing. So I used a lot of black in the whole composition. There's houses that have very, very little bits of the original color showing through. I had so much fun filling up each one with different types of lines and texture and of course a lot of black. When they were all done, I decided the blank space on top was too big and too 
well, blank. So I just drew a circle to symbolize either the moon or the sun, and then added dots all over to have some texture in the sky as well. Remove the tape and here is the final product. I love this page. I definitely think it looks like something that was printed and as a print, it looks amazing too. Let's move to the next page. And here again, I just thought about this while I was filming. These little sparks of inspiration are something I really would love for you to get from this video. The ideas I'm sharing with you are just a starting point from which to stir your own creativity. So I think that if you start doing one of them or all of them, you'll probably get your own spark on how to do something a little bit different to create something new and come up with a new idea of your own. Even if it's just changing colors, even if it's changing scale, you'll, you'll use your own creativity, I'm sure. In this case, my brilliant new idea came from the fact that I wanted these two pages to sort of match like the two previous ones, which was a complete accident, but now I wanted it to happen again. So I covered my entire page with watercolor and that first layer dried and I thought it was too light. So I went over everything with my paints gray. Then I brought all of the tapes I had around me and started to draw circles with the same Posca markers. I just started to draw different types of circles and have fun with it. I wasn't really thinking that much about the composition, but enjoying every part of the process. It is also really, really nice to work with paint markers because there's no really going wrong. Because if you make a mistake and you want to cover it, you can paint any color above any color and it will look fine as it covers it. Once I was done with both pages, um, they didn't really look like they match and I thought that was because I needed to add some black. So I added some extra simpler circles with a black marker and now I think these two are more harmonious. Next ideas and as soon as I flip the page over I have to laugh and find this funny because since there's already a paint stain there, this page is also gonna be something I really didn't plan for. So what happened? Where did this paint come from? What is it doing there? Well, for my previous video, I wanted to take a nice picture of a brush going across the page for my thumbnail. And I don't know why, instead of doing it on a loose piece of paper, I went ahead and did it in the same sketchbook. I wasn't really thinking, I guess. So now I have this stain that I have to work with somehow, but we'll work with that later. First, on the other side, we are going to address another concern from the comments. And that concern is how to let go and enjoy the process without worrying about the final result. So I'm going to show you a way to do that by actually using a reference picture. For this, I just opened Pinterest and searched for a beautiful bouquet, and I'm going to try to recreate it as best as I can on this page. Like I'm really going to try to paint these flowers. But the thing is, I'm going to use my watercolors super watered down so they move and mix with each other a little bit more. So here's me really trying to recreate that picture. And after a little while, when the page is dry, you can see that the flowers are still pretty recognizable. And here's where you could go ahead and just trace them and make this a beautiful floral page. But I want us to use it to think a little bit outside the box. And the way you do that is by tracing the outline of the paint stains. Stop looking at them like flowers, just look very close at the edges of the dry paint and follow those. Also, outline and trace two or more flowers or shapes together in order to get a very different and unrecognizable shape, as you can see in my example. You get a different shape that has nothing to do with the flower, and then you have fun with it by adding lines in the middle with different thicknesses and all of that. Again here, I'm outlining all of these flowers together. I don't know how many parts of flowers were in that stain, but I outlined it like it was one thing and I got this very weird shape that I loved working with. I continue to have fun with all of my page and I cannot tell you how much I love doing this. Not because of the final result, which is still pretty, but because it does relax me, it helps me see things differently and it's just fun to do. Here, this channel is a space I created where I just have fun with art. It's not that serious. I'm just doing it for myself, not for collectors, not for the gram, not for anything else, like I do in my job as a fine artist. Here, I create for the sake of creating and to enjoy the process. I create for fun and, and maybe, just maybe, to inspire someone else to do the same thing. That would be great. With that beautiful page done, it was time to address the stain. And for that, I'm actually drawing inspiration from my own abstract landscapes. 
that I'm sharing with you. And these are not mock-ups. Those are actual landscapes I painted. And as you can see, some of them are pretty large. So I know these ideas work beautifully on a large scale. I just added more and more stripes of paint on top of the stain, just having fun with it and creating some sort of mountains. I also remember I had some glittery watercolors that I thought would be nice to use in the sky. But to be honest, these only work super well when they don't have too much moisture on them and you lay them on thick. So you can barely see the glitter on this page, but it still gave it a little bit of a different texture and that was nice. When everything was dry, I brought out some color pencils in the same tones and added lines and textures and had fun with it. The only thing I added to the page that I've never ever done before in my paintings is the silhouette of a tree, which is really bad. Bad, bad drawing, but who cares? I wanted to try something different, right? I still love it and had even more fun by adding a little bit of gold paint with my marker. So here's my final result. And even though that tree is ugly, <laughs> Look how pretty this looks as a large painting. Next two pages, and for some reason, I thought it would be nice to do both at the same time. These two were planned ideas, and on the first one, I was trying to interpret a comment from a subscriber. She said she used to love having lines across her page and then painting the shapes that resulted from those lines, a different color each, almost like little mazes. And I thought, well, that sounds like it could be fun. So I grabbed a little bit of washi tape and created a pattern that I thought would be fun to color in. What can I tell you? I am a child at play. Once all of the tape was down, I started to fill in the shapes and also at the same time paint stripes of different widths with my leftover watercolor mixtures. Both of these processes were very enjoyable and relaxing. I paused my recording as the pages dried and I thought they were done and I put my thumb on one of them and moved a lot of the paint around. I don't have a footage for this, but I do have footage of me trying to fix it. I heard there's watercolor erasers now, but I don't have one. So I saturated my brush with a lot of water and tried to pick up some of that paint. Then I just ended up covering all of those stripes with the light wash, making it look like a background. After that, I repainted some of the lines out and let it dry again. Brought in a bunch of different pens because I thought it would be fun to add texture and lines to the lines I had already painted. For example, here I'm using a ball pen and I'm using a gel pen and I'm using markers. And with that, I finished. I don't know why I don't have a better shot of the final page, but I did create some beautiful mock-ups and I love these two. The piece is so simple, but so wonderful. Time to remove the tape from the other page. And I was really looking forward to that because I know it's always satisfying. But when I removed the last piece of tape and look at the page, I hated it. No, no, no. Hate is not a strong enough word. It, I cannot describe how much I do not like this page. I was having a full on artistic tantrum, full on, and really, really, really considered tearing it off. I mean, I could edit it out. Nobody would ever know. But again, I calmed myself down and I literally turned the page to have some distance from the experience and just started painting some new lines to feel better. This was one of the ideas that I actually had for today. I wanted to do some very curvy lines with an almost monochromatic color combination. So I went ahead and did that, enjoying every second of the process because it's so satisfying. more lines on top once it was dry using more watercolor pens and markers and I was so happy with this piece painting these lines felt amazing and I think this one is my favorite of the ones we've done today just because it's the one I like the most as a large scale piece. Look at how gorgeous it looks by making it giant and adding it to the walls in the mock-ups. This final page made me feel so good that I was actually fueled to go right back to the disaster I made in the previous one. And I was going to try to fix it. But I couldn't think of any idea on how to fix it. 
How on earth could I fix this ugliness without completely painting on top of it? Well, I couldn't, so I just grabbed one of my pens and took that disappointment out by making a big scribble across it and trashing it. That felt so good, you have no idea, because I was really having strong feelings about the result and what it said about me as an artist. Then to proceed, I took a deep breath, completed the line from my aggressive scribble, and drew more lines on top of it. Each line I made to cross this horrible thing out made me feel better and better and better. So you can see my lines start to calm down towards the end. And of course, once I put all of that emotion on the page, what I decided to do with this was use it as neurographical art because rounding out these corners feels amazing. So now I'm feeling okay about sharing that not everything I make is beautiful. I do make horrible, horrible stuff sometimes and that's okay. You can either fix your horrible artwork or learn from it. It's a win in any case. And here is my end result. It, is it the most gorgeous? No, it's not. Does it look better? It looks a lot better. And I did a happy dance because this one is something I actually can live with having in my book. Hate is out the window and now I'm done and happy. Let's take a quick look at everything we made today before going on to that show and tell of the materials I used that I offer in the intro. So we have my favorite curvy lines. I think that looks so yummy. We made this page that I hated and used it as therapy. And I think it looks very nice now. We made some simple stripes that look beautiful in a composition and are also really fun to make because you get to test colors and markers and brushes and it looks amazing. We did an abstract landscape that came from repurposing a stained page. We did some reverse coloring without really thinking about the result and it's so pretty. We played with paint markers, creating a spread that includes this beautiful little house painting. And last, we have our two pages of green and beautiful leaves that are so different and so fun to make. That was it for today's ideas and before going into the materials, uh, let me apologize again for the microphone being off. Okay, here we go. Okay, so I hope you had fun creating with me today and let me show you my sketchbook. This is by far the most asked question and I have that news. This is made locally here in Ecuador, but uh, what I can share is that it is watercolor um, paper. It's 250 grams, so it's pretty thick. And um, it says here the, the type of paper, it's called Old Mill, if that helps. Now, before showing you the rest of my materials, I am going to go ahead and get the most similar sketchbook I can find on Amazon and try it out for you. So if there are any other art supplies for your sketchbook that you would like me to um, try, let me know so I can try those in a future video and show you what you can make with them and show you if they're nice. That leads me into my watercolors that I use. I use Jane Davenport, both my sets are from her and these are so good. The quality of the pigment is amazing, but I could not find them anymore on Amazon. She has her own webpage. If you want to visit that, you can buy it there but they're no longer available at Amazon. So if there's any other set you want me to try, I would be happy to just comment below. The other thing that I did not use in this video, but I did in the previous one was my alcohol markers. I have this Ohuhu set, I got the cheapest set, but keep in mind that even with my thick, thick paper, they do bleed through. The other big question is about the, um, markers the fine point markers i use and these are it uh, they're editing they are awesome they go on everything and they don't bleed when you put the alcohol markers on which is great you do have to let them dry a little bit and then they're perfect so i'm gonna link all of these i don't think i'm forgetting anything i had a question about this it's just an eraser i just like the shape because it's neat and oh um my glittery watercolors where did i put them Hold on. This is the set. It is from Paul Rubens. Oh, how do you pronounce that? Paul Rubens. They're glittery. I don't think the camera does them justice at how glittery the paper looks, but I love these two. I think with that, I hopefully answered all of your questions. If you have any more, I'm happy to answer anything, anything that you want. So thank you for joining me today. Thank you for watching this far. And if you like this video, please give it a like or share it. It does help my little channel a lot. And I hope I'll see you next time. Bye.